Hello class. Today we're going to review how to look at feedback from your teachers and look at the rubric to improve your writing and resubmit for a better grade. So I just did an assignment for Ms. Wheeler and she sent me some feedback. So I'm going to go into classwork and look at view your work. I can see the assignment here and at first it's probably just going to show up with the grade. I can see I got a seven and a half, 7.5 out of 13. I do a little bit of math in my head. Seven and a half is, well, it's half of 15. Uh, it's only a little bit better than half of 13. So that's a grade that I really want to improve. If I want to know the exact score, I can pull out my trusty cell phone and just quickly doo -doo 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 -doo, throw it into the calculator. And if I do 7.5, take the first number, divide it by the bigger number, it gives me a 57.6. Um, so that's below a failing grade. I definitely want to improve this grade. So the first thing I need to do is take a look. Ooh, I got a comment from her. So I'm gonna see this little box and I see Ms. Wheeler wrote, good start. I can tell you've been reading the book. Yes, I have. Make sure you're capitalizing the first letter in each word in the title. Oops, I missed my capitalization. Okay. And it says you want to have two pieces of evidence and your explained. So I'm, I'm thinking she capitalized those for effect. I might be missing some evidence and some explaining. I got some explaining to do. Look at the example for help and don't forget to run spell check. Okay, so I'm going to make sure to use her example. I'm going to run spell check and then I'm going to resubmit. So let me open up my assignment. Oh, before I do, I need to also stay on this page and click where it says view details because that's going to show me the rubric and I really need to know on the rubric what am I missing. So for my chapter two title, I only got half a point out of one. If I click the little drop down to expand criterion, it'll tell me you wrote a title, but it doesn't accurately reflect the main point of the chapter, or it has spelling and capitalization errors. Uh, I might have some capitalization errors. And you can go down and you can look at each one. Oh, my explanation for chapter two is good. That's a she gave me awesome on that one, two full points. I'm not going to change my explanation on that one. I'm going to focus on the things that I can improve. So I can look and I can go each individual one or up on top. If I click the double arrows here, it'll just expand everything. And I can scroll down. I can see for chapter three, my title, there's some mistake for my chapter three explanation. I only got half a point out of two. So I really want to fix that one. I'm going to be flipping back and forth between the rubric here as I go through the different um, chapter titles and my explanations just to make sure that I'm looking at the right one. And before I start, let me just check this last one. Spell and grammar check. I got zero points on this one because there are multiple spelling and or grammar errors. So let's get to work here. So. Chapter two title, she told me that I was missing. Eee, I made a mistake. I can see right there, I've got to capitalize. So I'm going to put a capital F. The word and I know can stay lowercase. It's not an important word in the title. It doesn't add anything. It's not standing out for any reason. Whoops, messed up where I put my C there. So the and stays lowercase, but everything else. Everything else gets a capital letter. Then if I go back here, chapter two explanation, I already did it, so that's good. Let me jump right into chapter three now. I need to fix the title and I really need to fix the explanation. So let's see what I can do. Chapter three title is Gary the Accountant. Oh, it's underlined there, so let me just check it. That's how you spell accountant, cool. And then let, let me look at my explain. So in her comments, Ms. Wheeler told me to look at the example. Ooh, this is her example. So let me see what she did 
so I can get some ideas on how I could improve my own. It says for Uncooked Bacon, this is a good title because Avon told a classmate a lie about why she doesn't have arms. All right, so I answer the question directly. Shh, now there's evidence. She told them that they were burned in a forest fire in Tanzania and they looked like two pieces of bacon. The boy then asks, cooked or uncooked? However, the truth is that she was born without arms. Avon likes to joke around, and this is an example of how she tricks other people for fun. So I'm noticing in that last sentence, she kind of puts together the uh, like the some character traits. She's connecting the title of just this one chapter to more of a broader understanding of Avon as a character. She likes to joke around. Uncooked bacon? No, her arms don't look like uncooked bacon, but that's kind of the joke. So let's see if I can do something similar with Gary, the accountant. So I start off, this is a good title because they meet Gary, the accountant. I know this because it says they meet Gary. All right, first of all, I definitely need a capital letter to start. They meet Gary. Ooh, Gary is a name. I'm going to capitalize that. And this is a good title because they meet Gary, the accountant. That's a complete sentence. I'm going to put a period there. I know this because it says they meet Gary. I don't think that sentence is really helping me explain anything. I want to talk about why Gary's interesting. Why am I going to name this whole chapter after Gary, the accountant? Gary better be a pretty interesting person. So let me go back to the chapter, actually, to get some good ideas. So if I pop into my ELA class here, look over at classwork, and go to the bottom, I'm going to look up chapter three. So I can, I'm just going to skim it for some other good ideas about Gary, the accountant. All right, so the dirt never ended. That could have been a good title, too. Oh, here they meet. Nice to see you again, Gary. Ah, oh, they're talking to Gary. Um, he's the one who interviewed us. Oh, so he's he's important. The parents met him earlier. And this must be Avon. That's something a person says when they first meet a person that they've heard of. So she's meeting Gary. All right. So they're asking about Joe Cavanaugh, but Gary's like, oh, no one ever meets Joe, not around here. Um, that's strange. Hmm. So Gary just smiles and tilts his hat like a cowboy. Hmm. So I'm trying to find out a little bit more about Gary here. Why would Gary be? Oh, look at this. So Gary's kind of mysterious. It says, I thought about what Gary had said. No one ever meets Joe. And I wondered why. So Gary kind of gives an idea in Avon's head that might contribute to the development of this plot. It might make Avon start to ask more questions and find out more things. And now that I've read a little bit more in the story, I know that to be true. So Gary, the accountant, is a decent title for this chapter. Could be better, but I'm going to just give my strongest evidence to prove why Gary, the accountant, is a good title here. Um, I know this because they meet Gary, the accountant. He was the person who interviewed Avon's parents before they moved to Arizona. Gary is friendly, but strange. I think that he will play an important role as the book continues. So, I say it's a good title because they meet Gary. I tell a little bit more about who he is and then that I think he's going to be somehow important. That would make it a good title. 
All right, I've got two more chapters that I can improve here. For chapter four, I'm just gonna flip back here. For chapter four, let me see the comments. Oh, so my title for chapter four was good. Ooh, I even capitalized everything, good, good on me. And my explanation is almost there. I explained why I chose my title, but it's either unclear or I only had one piece of evidence. Let me see what I wrote. Avon is nervous about her first day of school, so she microwaved her cereal. You came out with your shirt on backward and then stuck your cereal in the microwave. Well, I got some spelling mis mistakes. I know I can fix that easily. Spell check helps. And I'm gonna just double check that I put the word stuck in there and not a different word. Let me reread this. Avon is nervous about her first day of school, so she microwaved her cereal. You came out with your shirt on backwards. So I put this in quotation marks, but I'm not clear about who said it. So I need to explain. Um, if I didn't know this, I would go back into the chapter and find the details. I know because I already did that, that it's her mom that tells her that you came out with your shirt on backwards and then stuck it in your cereal. And I can definitely find that evidence. I'm on chapter four. Show you here. So they're talking about her first day of school. Mom's like, hey, are you going to be all right? Um, everything good with your brain there? And then mom says, oh, good because I was a little bit worried this morning when you came out with your shirt on backward and then stuck your cereal in the microwave. So mom was worried about Avon. Um, and she's worried about Avon because Avon is nervous about her first day of school. So I think the title's good. How could I beef up this explanation? She was nervous about her first day of school, so she microwaved her cereal. Her mom was concerned about her and asked if everything was okay because, then I'm going to use the same quote. She said, And then I've got the quote that Avon's mom said. I don't like because here. And asked if everything was okay. Mm. I'm gonna read this. She said, I'm gonna say it like that. Came out. All right. And then I'm gonna just explain it. Like, what does this show us about Avon as a character? Well, the fact that she put her cereal in the microwave, cold cereal, right? I'm not talking about oatmeal. She put her like Cheerios in the microwave. Um, this explains that Avon was nervous. This shows us more about how anxious she was. This tells me that Avon was um, not feeling herself because she did something weird. So let me put that in writing. Um, this shows more about Avon as a character and proves that she was nervous. Let me use a different word. I have nervous already. I'm going to use anxious. It kind of means the same thing. Proves that she was anxious about her first day of school. Now, I could have used the title, The First Day of School. That would make a lot of sense, but this one's a little bit more fun. And the explanation really proves how, like, this is telling me more about Avon as a character. I'm going to go with that. All right. And then chapter five, a tour of my town. Again, I think I did a good job with the capitalization here. Oops. I'm going to just jump into my rubric. Good. I got full credit there, and I need to beef up the explanation. So this is a good title because Avon, ooh, Avon is a name. I need to capitalize it. Even talks all about the town where she lives. And we're going to capitalize it. Stagecoach pass is a separate word. There are more empty buildings and open ones in the place. Mm, what kind of place is this? A theme park. 
And it's a theme park where Avon's family works. So let's see here. I want to fully explain with two pieces of evidence. She talks all about the town where she lives, stagecoach pass. There are more empty buildings than open ones in the theme park where Avon's family works. Hmm. You know what? Stagecoach Pass is actually the name of the theme park. So I'm going to cut that and I'm going to paste it down here with theme park. That makes things a little more clear. Stagecoach Pass or Avon. Haven's family works. So I'm taking this. Stagecoach Pass is telling me about that theme park. What else could I say? So a tour of my town. Again, it is really going to help you to go back into the chapters to find your evidence. So I'm just going to pick this up. All right. A lot of people think it's cool to live in a theme park, but right. She tells all sorts of reasons why it's not all that cool to live where she does. Um, it's a 24 hour a day job. All right. She's telling, Ooh, she talks about the Rocky mountain oysters. Gross. Um, stage goes past. All right. More about dirt roads, dirt road. All right. I'm talking a little about spaghetti and, and lots of details about, um, the theme park where she lives. So, more empty buildings than open ones. All right, she talks to Henry a little bit more. This all takes place in that town. And at the end, she finds these do not enter signs. Oh yes, I remember that being a little scary. So. At the end of the chapter, Avon finds a locked room with seven do not enter signs on it. This makes me interested to find out more about where Avon lives. So there I'm giving lots of details. I'm telling what I read in that chapter. It's all adding more about kind of the main idea that comes from the title. And I back it up by telling me that, yeah, this is, this is interesting to me. This title makes me want to read more. And that's what a good chapter title should do for the reader. So with this being all set, I'm going to double check on the rubric that I've done everything I was supposed to. The last thing was to do spell check and grammar check. I see one little squiggly line here and mom's hair look. It should be mom's hair looked or looks. Uh, well, since it's looked here, it should be looked there, I think. Well, this is a quote. All right, there's no more squiggles. I think I'm good to go and I can resubmit. I'm going to click the turn in button up at the top and that'll go right back into Ms. Wheeler for her to grade for me. I hope that I was able to raise my grade. Catch you all next time.